A Hole Productions. Behold the Source Wall. Behind it is the single greatest secret of the universe. This is as far as I dare to go. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Source Wall. And today we are covering DC fandom. And yes, I mean we, because I am not here alone. Uh, so I want to thank Gene Hoyle. Gene Hoyle, say hello to everyone. Introduce yourself and tell them where they can find you on social media before we jump into today's episode. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. Uh, as you said, my name is Gene. Um, I'm the host of Nerd Nation Radio, a podcast that's currently in hiatus, but coming back soon. Uh, if you Google search Nerd Nation Radio, we can be found on most podcast aggregates. I'm um, also an independent comic book creator and publisher. Um, currently, we are looking for submissions for Nerd Nation Presents. If you're a writer or an artist or a colorist or any of those things, contact me at genesplice71 at yahoo.com for information on that. Absolutely. It's a blast having you again. Thanks for coming back for another episode. And everyone out there, yes, if you're an artist or writer, please contact Gene. Look him up. All of his information is down in the description box below and help him make some great comic books. And yes, today's topic is going to be about the Batman. And this is our first episode that we're recording this week. So if you guys are enjoying these, you know, where these are going to go up every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for like the next seven or eight days. I mean, we got like eight or nine of these videos and I'm going to be posting one a day every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until they're all up. So make sure you stay subscribed so you don't miss out and check those links for Gene's stuff. Become a fan of his. Be a friend of his. He's an awesome dude. Follow him on Facebook. Uh, check out Nerd Nation Radio awesome stuff and gene i'm so glad you're here with me today because we are going to start this whole dc fandom off with the one thing that is number one trending on youtube even i mean i normally i see and hear about stuff trending on twitter but uh, i'm not on twitter anymore and i'm not on instagram i don't have social media i just have youtube and i was seeing this the batman thing was everywhere so now that we have actual footage and a teaser trailer for this movie what are your thoughts on Matt Reeves' take on the Batman character? So far, from what I've seen, I think it's going to be really, really neat. Um, he mentioned a bunch of times he wants to focus on Batman the Detective, which I think is a great move. Because so often we've seen Batman the Ninja and you know, Batman this and that. You don't see a lot of him sitting over the back computer figuring stuff out. And I really want that Batman. Yeah, you know, yeah I, I, I agree with you. Uh, go ahead. I like like the, the Batman that's at crime scenes, like investigating and, and doing doing bad stuff. To me, that's the most interesting Batman in the world. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's some of the fun of some of the comics, especially the cartoon was really good at that, where he would, um, you know, he'd be like, uh, what was he? He was talking to, uh, about fan, in the Mask of the Phantasm. He was like, well, there's some residue here. He's like, it's not much, but it's been that kind of night. <laughs> and then he like goes yeah. to the Batcave and analyzes this residue and stuff. And yeah, it's a it kind of delivers um for lack of a better term, because I don't particularly like the CSI shows, but it, it right. does it does deliver that kind of um, uh, you know tone for it, which is which is something like you said we haven't seen too much of in the movies. In the movies, they focus on him as the fighter, as the warrior, as the ninja, as the crazy man. You know, in Michael Keaton's case, you know, um, you have different versions of him, or, or just the Playboy version they went with in Batman and Robin and uh, Batman Forever. There's all these different sides of Bruce Wayne that we've seen in movies. But we haven't really seen like a, a, a young, broken, emo y uh, detective. Like, honestly, out of all the versions we've had, this is, we have not gotten that version. So I will say, when they first announced this, I was not very, too excited. I'm like, not because of anything against the cast. I think I've seen Robert Pattinson in some great, I have never actually seen the Twilight movies. So when people harp on him saying he's terrible in those or those movies are bad, I can't comment. I don't know him from those. I know him from other works that he's done after those movies. So, um, so I saw him in the lighthouse. I saw him in other things, and he's he's a phenomenal actor. He's going to be in Tenet coming up. So, I don't mind him as a choice for Batman, um, especially with this version they're going for. He can fight. Clearly, we saw in the trailer he can knock a guy around a little bit. But um, it seems like you like you said uh, he, this guy can defend himself. It seems. But you mentioned something really interesting because we talked before we recorded this, and I said I didn't like the scene where he's punching the guy in the trailer because when he's punching him, like I, I always see Batman as a guy who can, he knows pressure points. He shouldn't punch you seven times that to me, I'm like, he's strong, he's strong enough to hit you twice and knock you out. Um, right. and I think that's better. in when directing action, like John wick is like these really quick 
one two punch and the guy's down one two stabs and the guy's down um shoot the bullet guy's down throw glass at his neck the guy's down it's like really quick and i feel like action and movies have kind of gone in that direction so to see this where he's punching someone six or seven times like a power ranger cart, uh, episode i'm kind of like uh no batman would hit harder than that but uh i actually you mentioned well this is a batman who's in year two and he doesn't have the finesse and when you said that i said you know what you're right i'm kind of I, I felt kind of dumb for not thinking of that. So you seem to be very observant of this trailer. What are other things like that that you noticed about this movie that clearly defines him as a, a less experienced Batman? Uh, well, I think that that is one. Just his fighting style has not um, evolved at all. In fact, I would say more than likely he hasn't had any training from anyone outside of like, you know, a punching bag in his basement. Um, and I think, I hope they deal with that issue. Um, in one way or another in this movie. Uh, it'd be nice if, like, you know, someone shows up. I'm, I'm sure it won't be Lady Shiva because I'm not that lucky. But have someone show up and teach him how to fight um, with the finesse that we know him for. Um, I, I want to see a Batman that maybe makes more mistakes in this movie. Maybe, like, it, there's a great scene in your Batman Year One um, where it's the first time Batman's out and he's wearing, like, a ski mask and stuff. Yes. And uh, the mask gets yanked on. And it, so he can't see, and he almost dies. Um, and so that, that kind of taught him, oh, I, better, I better make a mask that's not going to get pulled off every time I get in a fight. I, I like seeing Batman in that learning stage, and I hope we're getting a lot of that in this film. Well, they definitely said, like Matt Reeves said on the panel, that he's definitely doing that with the costume. He said, like, the costume will evolve over the course of the movie because it's going to be Bruce learning what materials are good for what situations and things like that. And I like that, too. And also, there's been no mention of a Lucius Fox, which it's funny because there was a whole generation of people before the Nolan movies that didn't know who Lucius Fox was. And then after the Nolan movies, there's a bunch of people who only know Lucius Fox as the guy who makes Batman's gear. But that was never the case in the comic books until the Nolan movies. Um, Exactly. He was basically, he was the guy that did Bruce Wayne's job as a businessman because Bruce was too busy being Batman. Right, he just ran the day-to-day operations of Wayne Enterprises for him. Um, right. And that was it. It's because Bruce, out of all the stuff he learned, how to fight, how to do forensics and all this stuff, he did not learn how to run a company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was not on, the, on his to-do list. So he just trusted Lucius to do it for him. And uh, yes, over the years, Lucius helped develop other things. But again, a lot of that came around and post-Nolan movies. Right, exactly. One thing I'm excited about, and this is just me, I'm a child of the 80s. Um, the Batmobile is a muscle car. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. <laughs> it does look cool. Um, you know, speaking of helpers, I think when I was uh, in the 80s and 90s, when I was reading Batman, Batman did have a helper making his stuff. It was a guy named Harold. Yeah, Harold. Yeah, we need Harold in this movie. Yeah, I got a guy hunchback, <laughs> played by Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi as a hunchback uh, working on Batman gear is exactly what I want to see in the sequel of this movie, uh, Matt Reeves. <laughs> um, you, you can even get rid of the Batman part. Just give me a Herald movie. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> Herald the mo- the Herald. Yes, uh, exactly. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Herald. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of I'm Vengeance, I'm Herald. Um, yeah, yes, I, saw, yeah. I saw people freaking out on that line too. I'm because it's like you know that's from the animated series where he says I'm Vengeance, I'm the Knight, I am Batman. Um, yes. Uh, that's That was pretty cool that he didn't do the um, Batman line. Everyone was expecting him to. And the fact that only 25% of this movie is filmed and they were able to piece together this trailer with some sound editing is pretty impressive. Um, I also want to give him I, I want to give him a shout out for using Nirvana's uh, Something in the Way song. I think they used the Devonshire remix from one of the collection uh, anniversary CDs. But um, I want to give them credit for using a Nirvana song because I'm like, well... He, that Bruce Wayne, that version of Bruce Wayne in that trailer looks like he would listen to Nirvana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, go ahead. I was also thinking if, if they, um, I'm glad, I'm glad it looks like we're not going to see the origin, which is fantastic. Yeah, no, um, I don't want to see any more origin stuff, but it, I, that's one of the things I'm a little worried about was, uh, the Riddler, by the way, I'm pretty sure that's the Riddler. The guy who's using the duct tape, um, he's wearing a green jacket and he's got some kind of weird thing covering his face, but if you look closely, those aren't goggles on his head. Those are actually reading glasses. They look like reading glasses. 
Um, so yeah. I, I'm thinking he's wearing a green jacket. He sends envelopes to Batman. Obviously, at the end of the trailer, they show the question marks for 2021. I'm I'm guessing it's Dan, uh, Paul Dano playing Riddler, um, which is fine. It's a different take on Riddler, but I don't know if you noticed this Easter egg when he when Gordon pulls out the the card, the greeting card, and it says to my secret friend who. There's an actual owl on the card that in the word who, like an owl, was under it. So I'm, I'm wondering, and then he says, you're a part of this at the end of the trailer. And Batman says, how am I a part of this? He says, and then Riddler says, you'll see. I'm wondering if Riddler is somehow an agent of the Court of Owls, and they're going to tie this into the Wayne family and maybe reveal that the, the they don't maybe they won't show the origin of Batman of his parents dying. But the way they'll reference it is almost hopefully better than Amazing Spider-Man did, where Peter learns about his family being like spies or whatever. It seems right. like maybe Bruce is going to find out that his family is somehow connected to the Court of Owls, and maybe they could be responsible for his death. So this might be a thing where he's not only just solving the mystery of who killed the mayor, because that's who it looks like dies at the beginning of this, is a mayor named Don something, because they showed the newspapers around him, and he gets his head taped up. So it looks like the Riddler's going after corrupt bureaucrats, um, kind of like he does in the Arkham video games, which is great, in my opinion. Um, but he's doing that, and Batman's got to stop him because it's bringing chaos. But it sounds like the Riddler's trying to get Batman to be a part of something bigger. Um, and right. so um, I'm wondering if that's going to tie into Court of Owls. Yeah, there was a uh, an intrepid fan who realized that there's a code also in what the Riddler wrote. Oh, um, okay. I, I just read this like literally before we got we we got on the phone to record this stuff. Um, and then what he revealed by deciphering the code was basically a dad joke. Um, it's like, what do you what do you call a dead liar? Or no, what does a dead liar do? Right. Well, he still lies. Yes. Yes. Yeah, right. And that's like, okay, that's clever. <laughs> well, it's definitely an Edward Nigma or Edward Nash joke for sure. Um, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I had, I had, I mean, I had heard that riddle before. So, but, uh, but yeah, I think uh, there, yeah, I'm sure there's people out there, d you know, dissecting this trailer a million different ways. Um, for oh, me, yeah. for me, I just went by. I, I paused a couple frames to see the card, and then when on one of the frames when I was looking at the card, I saw the, um, you know, what do you call a. a you know, a dead, you know, man who lies or whatever, and or whatever the the joke is, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's he still lies because it's him lying down. Um, yeah. Right. So, uh, but yeah, no, I th I think it's uh, it's neat. Uh, I'm intrigued. I'm fifty fifty again. It's kind of like Suicide Squad. I'm fifty fifty because what I got was I got these visions of of uh, Spider Man trying to figure out that his you know who his dad was and that he worked for Oscorp or whatever, and I right. I didn't I didn't think that worked well in Amazing Spider Man. Uh, learning who Peter's parents were. I thought that was kind of an irrelevant story to tell, um, even though it's different, which I give him credit for. But so in this one, to, I feel like though they probably will somehow bring in the Court of Owls because ever since, you know, Warner Brothers, ever since that comic came out, they have a hard on to use those characters. So they put them in the Gotham show. Now they're going to be in the Gotham Knights video game. Um, and uh, and then they're going to be in, the, you know, they might be in this. So yeah, it could be. And then last thing, like, let's talk real quickly. I just remembered this. The Batman Gotham Knights video game. People saw my reaction. I already said all my piece about that already up on uh, the YouTube channel. But w did you see the trailer? And do you have any thoughts on uh, Batman Gotham Knights? Yes and yes. Okay. Um, one of the things, and Antique and I have been friends for a long time, so he knows this about me. Um, I am way less of a Batman fan than I am a fan of Batman supporting cast. Um, <clears throat> Nightwing, Red Hood, Robin, all of those people, they're... To me, I, I, they're way more near and dear to my heart than Batman himself. Uh, and to, to find out there's going to be a Batman-less game with these characters in it, I am so, sold. I got 100%. Say, yeah, I got to say, the, 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 the balls on them to go, you know what, we're going to make a Batman game, but Batman's not going to be in it. I'm like, uh, that's so awesome, because you're right. I actually, I think what they did, because I saw some people being mad about this, and I don't understand it, because when every time an Arkham game came out, and they were like, especially with Arkham City onward, they were like, you, they had these challenge modes or or parts of the game where you could play as Catwoman or Robin or, you know, other characters, Batgirl DLC. And people were like, we want more of this. It's like the people playing those games were like, I want more Robin, I want more Nightwing, I want more Batgirl. And it's like, great. And I think Warner Brother Montreal was like, we want that too. So why don't we make a game where 
Bruce, I mean, of course, you know, he's probably not dead. I'm thinking since it's the Court of Owls and Mr. Freeze, who obviously they have a connection in the comics where Mr. Freeze helped the Court of Owls with their freezing technology. It's the same stuff he uses for Nora. Um, I imagine that Bruce maybe did die and that at the end of the game, you'll have to fight Bruce as a Talon. Maybe. And then save him. Um, that would be interesting. But uh, but even if Batman isn't in the game, doesn't matter. The most of the game, I mean, it seems like the whole game you play as those four characters, and you can do one player or two player co op, and that to me, you're right. I, I'm with you. I love Batman, but I am much bigger fan of his family, and the uh, the fact that we're getting a game where it's the four kids and they are uh, in direct contact with Alfred and Renee Montoya on their missions makes me so happy. Oh yeah, well, I love Renee. Renee, sorry, <laughs> Renee Montoya a lot. Yes. Um, since her introduction in Gotham Central, one of my very favorite books of all time, and uh, she was fantastic in that book. Nice, I agree. She, yeah. Also, her her extended um, arc in No Man's Land with Harvey Dent looked really, really good. That was very good, actually. That that was my favorite part of No Man's Land, actually. Yeah. Um. Awesome. So, any last thoughts on Matt Reeves' The Batman or Batman Gotham Knights, sir? Um, I've been so sick and tired of so many Batman movies and so many Batman cartoons. And the fact that I'm actually enthusiastic about both of these projects makes me kind of happy. Yeah, I, th- I think they complement each other well. Because, like I said, I-, I think a lot of people, there is some Batman fatigue going on with hardcore fans. Uh, I see that a lot online. People are like, God, more Batman stuff? Like, you know, every time McFarlane does a new line of figures, if there's anyone Batman related, which mostly there are, they go, God, more Batman stuff. And so there's there's definitely a little fatigue going on with Batman. So to have a movie coming out that focuses on a detective version of him and then have a game come out that doesn't have him in it at all almost, I think that's perfect. I think that's going to be great next year. I agree. It's, it's definitely going to be a good time to be a DZ fan. And I hope that we get more um, when this is successful. We see some of the other characters, like like the JSA thing is a, a fantastic idea. Give us more out of the box stuff like that, and you keep me coming. Yes, give us a Booster Gold Choose Your Own Adventure animated movie. God. Yes. Tina, eat your food. Um, yes. <laughs> all right, that's my only Napoleon Dynamite reference I'll ever make. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Gene, thank you for being here. Everyone out there, please, you know, if you're liking the episodes, stay subscribed. we got more coming. We've got two more episodes coming up tomorrow and the day after. And then uh, also check out all of Gene's links. Become a friend of his. Become a fan. He's an awesome dude. He deserves your support. So go support him. Gene, thanks again for being here, my friend. Thank you, and vote for Pedro. <laughs>